everyone. And nice to see you all here. My name is Riku Tapper, and I come from the, well, Posti Group in Finland. And there I am the head of our AI Center of Excellence, which is, which is um, well, our centralized function that's, that's supporting all the different Posti businesses and using, using these emerging technologies Pretty much anything you can, you can put under AI. We're also exploring blockchain options and and whatnot. And today I will be discussing discussing what, what we call the innovation funnel. So when we talk about the in innovation funnel, we we talk about the whole process of gathering ideas and then while well, doing different types of business case assessments to them and and then implementing and deploying them into production to actually capture the value for the business. But uh, now today I won't be talking about the whole funnel. Actually, only be discussing the first part, getting to the the, the big ideas, the, the the valuable ideas, and and how should we or the different tactics what, that we've we found useful in engaging the business to get at the good ideas. And well, any of us who have been establishing a AI function or anything related in AI in any any big big company, you're probably aware that. Well, getting some ideas, it's easy. You just sort of ask, who has ideas and how do we use AI? And tons of people come up with ideas. But I would argue that, that most of those ideas that people, the first ideas that people come up with, they're in most cases not the best ones you should run with. Not to say that they're, they're not of value. And definitely when, when you're starting off, those cases might be the ones that you want to go with because it's easy to sort of start building trust trust in the organization that we can actually do things with these these first ideas but they might not be the ones of most value and you might want to dig a bit deeper into in, into the problems within the businesses and, and 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 with the business development people and figure out together with them what are the key things that you should actually be working on to act, to produce the best possible value for the business so that's the tactics we've used, and that's, that will be what I am discussing today. And yeah, a couple of words about myself. Um, I started with Posti, Posti, the summer 2016, and, and since then I've been in various, various different analytics roles, ranging from, from just doing analytics myself to now heading my own department there. And, and prior to joining Posti, I, was, I, I did some, some research for the Finnish Air Force Modeling, modeling. Um, well, how should we shoot, shoot missiles and so forth? Boring stuff. But yeah, a um, couple of quick words about Posti. I don't know. Well, if there are any Finnish people here, I'm sure you know who we are, and probably most everybody else also. So we are the traditional postal operator in Finland. And in addition to, to delivering mail, so letters, magazines, and such, we also do parcels, so deliver, deliver parcels, and we do logistics. Logistics including also warehousing and, and all of that. And yeah, we have operations in, in, well, quite a large region, although we do focus in Finland, Baltics, and Russia. And well, as the traditional postal operator in Finland, we do have quite a long, long history and all of the payload that comes with that in our processes. And we are, are actually also Finland's biggest employer, the biggest private employer. So although well, I count us, us as a private company, although we are fully state owned, but so we employ around 21,000 people. Yeah. And so what is Posti trying, well, driving to be, striving to be? Well, we don't want to be the boring traditional postal company. We, as, as probably everyone here knows, the traditional mail volumes are in a slight decrease. So that's around 10 to 15% less every year, year on year. So that's quite radical. And that means that we have to change. We have to do something in order to survive and in, in order to thrive. And what it is that we're doing, well, we've sort of crystallized our, our strategy into five must-win battles that were battling, so we want to keep mail relevant to people as long as possible. We want to be the best best e-commerce uh, partner in Finland, so wh any e-tailer who is selling anything to Finland, we want to be the number one partner, partner for them to partner up with in Finland. Um, we want to revolutionize logistics. Logistics is quite a well, traditional industry, at least in Finland. I don't know 
I don't know, in Sweden or, or elsewhere in, Nord in the Nordics, but at least in Finland, it's quite traditional still. We want to bring it to the 21st century using, using different, different tools. And, and we, want, we want to renew our service culture. And again, if, if you're Finnish here in the room, you definitely read in the media a lot about us, not always in the positive most notes. And, and that's something that's, that we recognize. It's, it's, it's a big problem for us, and, and we're doing a lot, lot of work to sort of renew our culture, renew, renew our service culture, and, and, and really provide the best possible service to all, all our customers, whether they're consumers or businesses. And then last, but if anything, not least, we want to, we want to really, really boost our different digital services that we provide. So we want to, we want to make 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 mail or well, bring, bring digital aspects into mail so trying to keep that alive and and of course provide different different digital services for for our consumers also who who are receiving parcels for example make parcel receiving a lot easier and 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 fluent the overall mission to bring a smoother life smoother everyday life for everyone the key thing, digitalization and better services through digitalization. And just to sort of point out, well, bring out one example. We, a couple of years ago, we, we, we brought out our Oma Posti application in Finland. So Oma Posti application, it's, it's a mobile app through which any, anyone who is receiving mail or parcels in Finland can, can track any of their parcels. They can also receive invoices through the application and actually also today pay those invoices directly in that, in that application, which is quite cool, especially for me since at least I'm quite a lazy, lazy, lazy person in my personal finances. So being able to pay my bills straight off from my mobile phone, that's, that's quite easy and good for me. But, and, and this on the application, this, uh, this was actually, uh, is a great, a huge success. And, and actually last, last spring, for multiple weeks, we were number one in both iOS App Store and uh, Google Play Store, which at least I think is quite astonishing. So, what do we do with digitalization? We we provide better services. So, so well, we were one of the first in the world for to, to, to provide real tra real time item tracking. For, so, where is my parcel type stuff? Um, today, actually, through the same. On a posted mobile application, anyone who is receiving parcels can reroute those parcels to a more suitable location for them. So, let's say let's say that you ordered something from Amazon, and, and Amazon would or, or had that to be delivered to the nearest postal office. But that's very inconvenient for you. So then through the application now, or through text message earlier, and still, that's still an, a valid channel still today. You can reroute that to a better location. For example, a a uh, parcel locker that we have. That, that we have set up. And these parcel lockers, the smart post network, that's something that we, we are quite aggressively expanding currently. So, so by the end of last summer, we had 1,500 1, individual parcel lockers all, all around Finland. And, and now in the next couple of years, we'll be expanding that to 4,000 parcel lockers all around Finland. And so, and I mean, all, all around Finland, so all the way from Hanko in the very, very southern part of Finland to Utsjoki in the very northern part of Finland, everywhere. And the idea there is that, that re regardless of the time, when, when you want to pick up your parcel, you can pick it up as easy as possible. Other stuff we're doing with, with digitalization is, is improving productivity and quality of our own processes. So, so another example, Again, a couple of years ago, we introduced this POMO device. POMO is an acronym for Posti Mobile. So uh, it's, a, it's a basically an Android device, which now today, every single postal employee who's delivering mail or, de or delivering parcels or driving a truck around Finland has in their pocket. And through this device, then we can, we can uh, well, we have, we have work instructions for the employees, how, how should they do their job, and we can, we can push push tasks to them, for example, and, and they can ask for assistance and, and whatever the need. And that's something since we're developing that as our own, own platform there, we can very, very rapidly make, bring, bring new, new features there and, and, and really we've gotten that into a very, very good agile development phase. And yeah, 
and then of course customer service, uh, which which as in most most big companies we want to get as as good as possible, but also as efficient as possible. So so we want to automate as much as possible of the customer in interactions as we can, and and of, and then we're also introducing different types of virtual assistants, chatbots. So that's sort of the big picture of what we're trying to achieve. So, and, and sort of if, if I were to sort of put on two bullet points, it's to improve customer experience and to improve employee satisfaction. So what's the team that we're doing it with? Um, this is, this is our, our team at the time, at this time. And going back one year, you could approximately delete 10 people from there. So we've recruited quite a lot of people in the last year or so. And now we have a rock star group of data scientists and, and RPA developers who, who develop these solutions that then we use to, to well, make our process better and improve our customer experience. But now the thing is that, that no matter how many data scientists you have or how, how many data engineers you have. If you don't have any meaningful work for, th for them to do, they're quite useless. So, so in order to get the most value out of this, this bunch here, we really need to find those cases that, that really provide the maximum value then for the business. And, and for that, now I have a three, three different tactics that we've, we've utilized. And well, from the start, some of them might seem obvious, and they are obvious. But but I have a couple of couple of sub sub points there that that hopefully you'll find in, insightful. So first of all, be active, and, and and engage the stakeholders. And with this, I mean, spend the time to to sit down with the business representatives and 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 really really dig into their thoughts on what are the problems that are bugging them, and and and. Together, try and try and figure out what are such problems that can be solved, can be solved using data and AI, and and how how we should tackle those. And yeah, like I said, this is sort of obvious. Of course, this is how you go about the, getting the cases. But 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 we've noticed. Well, we've we've gone through I don't know dozens of dozens or dozens and dozens of different types of sessions with, with, with our business leadership and subject matter experts and process experts and, and pretty much everyone throughout the company. And some of these workshops, if we want to call them that, have been successful. We've, we've gotten good results out of them, but some have been spectacular failures. A complete waste of time for everyone involved. And, and we've tried to figure out what's the, what's the sort of magic there. What, what made th those successful workshops successful and, and then those that didn't, didn't succeed so well, what, what was wrong with them? And what, I, what we sort of figured out, well, it comes to two points. Again, starts off quite obvious. So you have to have the workshop and the session has to be properly scoped. And, and some, of the, some, of our, some of our failures have been due to, due to having well, two wide scope of, for, for the discussion. So if you have one day to go through things, you can't solve all, all of the world's issues. But if you haven't scoped the discussion well enough, and th then, then people tend to try and solve all of the world's issues. And then, then you come up with a long to-do list of, of which none are feasible, either business-wise or from a technical aspect. So, so really try and, try and scope and, and define the, the discussion very, very cleanly. And, and a good practice that we've seen that is that, that you try and find two, maybe three different themes that are already quite specific. And then you sort of overlay these on top of each other. And then, then in the intersection of these, these themes, that's, that's where then the magic happens. So a good example, good example was, is, a, is a session we had, we had um, just actually a couple of weeks ago where we decided to, decided to um, scope the discussion around what can we do to improve parcel receivers experience using data around our, our parcel worker network. So there we have already, there we have two different themes. We have the parcel receiver experience and then we have the parcel worker networks and the data that's coming out of those. 
and then we sort of over overlay these on top of each other, and then we have quite a well-scoped, clear, clearly, clearly defined area in which we then start discussing on what are the different use cases we could do in this realm, and, and how should we go about these. And, and that, well, that was a one-day one day workshop, and we came out of it with some 20, 20 um, use cases of which each and every single one was sort of ready for or at least almost ready for, for immediate development and implementation. So we had the data, we had all of the tools, we just need to put things together and, and, and into use. And, and the, the potential, potential business value of those combined was around six million. So pretty good use of a, of a day's work. And second point on how to make these workshops successful um, is, well, of course, workshops are nothing, nothing without the people. So, getting getting the right people in the room is, of course, key. And 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 there, of course, mix is good. So you want you want to have people who are sort of on the more senior side, who have who have more experience and and and, and also, of course, the the power to to change things. But then, on the other hand, those senior people, in most cases, they don't know the actual problems that well. So then you then you want to have the subject matter experts, or even even in some cases, you might want to have some frontline employees telling and, and and conveying their views on what's wrong and what could be be made better. But then, but then there's a trade-off because then if you have very senior people in the room and then you have have frontline employees, for example, in the room, so two very very different sides of the spectrum, then then you might be in trouble in the sense that in the sense that these these subject matter experts or analysts or or frontline employees in the extreme case, they might not feel free to speak their mind. They might feel a need to hide something, for example, and, and not, they might not tell the complete truth. So, so then there's a trade-off there. So, so trade-off between the mix, mix of people and, and then um, the, the uh, ability for everyone to speak their mind. Just two things to keep in mind on that. So this is sort of well, the first and the most obvious tactic, of course to get people in the room and discuss things through. Second tactic that we've used is, well, encourage everyone. Now, now I mean everyone, not only the business development people or the people who we decided to gather into one room to have a, a day-long session of workshops, but everyone in the company, all the way from, from CEO or board of directors, all the way to the frontline employees. Encourage everyone to participate in, in the ideation. So, and 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 the way to do this is well open up channels through which through which everyone can if, if need be anonymously be, give give ideas on how how to improve things and well usually i would recommend not doing things anonymously but of course depending on on what types of things you want to get get ideas on that might be needed but then there's also but then there's the issue of of those well most people in Posti, at least, they're not experts in data or AI in, or in technology. So they might not have the capability of, of, of identifying which use cases or which problems are such that they can actually be solved using technology. They just sort of, well, either, either they, they are not capable of identifying anything or then they, well, they, they figure that, okay, AI is some omnipotent technology that can solve anything and everything. And then, what well, they come up with absurd ideas that are in no no way technically technologically feasible. So, how to how to sort of rectify that? And that's by educating them. So, so what we've done we've we've started multiple different initiatives in in educating our staff on how how can can data and analytics and AI, how, how, how can these, t these methods be used to provide business value for the company? Um, last spring, we had, we had Singularity University from, from Silicon Valley come over to Finland to do a, a two-day workshop with us and, and discuss and well, basically speak their mind on, on how they see sort of the current state of technology, what's, what's possible now, and, and how to sort of get the value out of that, and, and also what they see coming sort of behind the curve. So what's up next, and, and, and what should we do with that? 
And I think they did, did an awesome job. We had, I think we had 150, 50 um, posti, posti employees there, again, ranging, ranging from, okay, not all the way to the, in this case, not all the way to the frontline employees, but, but all around the business. So business development people and, and sort of frontline managers. And, and then, of course, the senior management also. And, and that was, that was an, a very, very good, good experience, at least on my behalf. And second thing that we've started, well, in the beginning of this summer, we, we introduced, we opened up a online course for all Posti employees. So anyone in Posti is, is, can, can go and, and do this online course on, on digital transformational technology. So there's a module on AI there, and there's a module on blockchain and RPA and, and uh, augmented and virtual reality. And, and I checked the statistics yesterday and, and, and okay, we had 500 people who had done it. And okay, compared to the 21,000 uh, 21, employees in total, it's not very good, it could be better, but I think it's still, still quite good. And, and oh, on that online course, we also had the possibility to, to um, put in ideas on what would be in, in, in that person's perspective a suitable case for us to start working on and, and, and expand to, to some solution that would then, well, using AI, and, AI and, and data. And by the end of August, we had some 150 ideas there. And of course, that's a lot of work then to go through all of those, but, but, but I'd say that it was quite worthwhile. And, and, then, and then there we actually could see certain themes popping up over and over again. And, and that's, if you can sort of notice that, that, that same themes pop up over and over again, even from different individual people, then, then you can sort of start, start um, drawing the lines that, okay, these themes are probably important in some way. And maybe we should look more closely in, into these and, and stop working off of that. And well, then of course, then you shouldn't limit yourself to, to your own, to your own, um, staff either. So if, if you have a possibility to, to, to set up some round tables with, with other like-minded people from different companies who you are not usually, usually you don't want to sit down in the same table with your direct competitors, but, but for example, this group of, group of um, companies here, none of them are directly competing with each other. And we have this, this round table that, that we sit down into, uh, sit down around every two months, I believe, and discuss, discuss different things related to RPA development. How are different companies tackling different issues? And then also, also there we, we, we spar a bit uh, between each other and, and give each other good ideas. And Silo AI isn't a part of that. That round table, Silo AI is, is a, a partner of us. So in, in addition to us having our own team, we have, we've partnered, partnered up with Silo AI too for them to sort of augment our own capabilities. And then we've also also set up set up these open sessions for all of the companies to participate in. And and we've had now a couple of sessions with and in, in which the participants come can either come physically to our headquarters and and sit down and or or join by Skype and we've we've branded this as these as AI cafes. And and in the in the last last AI cafe, which we had a week ago, we had over one one hundred participants there. Which again, during during daytime, during business hours, I think is is a pretty good achievement. That one hundred people decided that that's valuable use of their time to come discuss things with us. So that's tactic number two, and then onwards to number three. Put your work boots on and experience the day to day yourself. So, okay. Maybe this doesn't apply to to all companies. I don't know, but it definitely applies to companies where where lots of uh, a lot of the operations and a lot of the business is done on the ground by a, by a large workforce, which in our case it is. So this is actually me me about a month ago month ago in one of our logistics centers doing well, sorting parcels. I did a couple of a couple of night shifts there just to sort of well get to know the people and get to know the process so I understand how the process goes and, and, and where the data comes from. Because at least in our, in our line of business, a lot of our, the data that we're working with 
it's produced by manual processes. And, and now if you don't understand what's going, what's happening between the, uh, in the mind of the person who is creating that data, it's well, quite difficult to, to really do anything with it. Or at least there's a big risk of doing something terribly wrong. So make time to, to spend a day or two every now and then in the front lines. And, and actually, well, not, not this night, but Thursday, Friday night, I'll be delivering newspapers. We'll see what happens there. <laughs> but yeah, and that's also a good, good way of, of also, also building the trust between, between the data teams, or, or the tech teams as, as we are, the te technology team, and, and then the business and, and then the operations. Because when, when you sort of put, your, put yourself on the line, that's, that's probably the best way to, to sort of gain confidence. But yeah, the trust is trust is key because if you don't, if there's, if there isn't a working relationship of, relationship of trust between the data team and the business, you, it, it's very difficult or, or impossible to get things done because then the business doesn't sort of have trust in you to to pro or produce those solutions that would bring value. So then they don't see see the time time spent in workshops valuable. Um, if they don't trust you to sort of um, take their ideas into consideration and, and, and really, really go forward with them, they don't see, see, see the value in giving you any ideas. And, and if they don't trust you to, to sort of do your job well, then they won't let you do the job. And thank you.